In this video, we're going to be talking about 10 tips for beginner photographers in 2023 that you probably want to know before jumping into the YouTube world of tutorials and all that stuff. What are the main things you need to work on or think about when starting? Uh, so yeah, here we go. So some people might start on their phone. Some people might start with, you know, a cheap camera that they found in their closet or something or their parents' closet. Uh, or you had the money to spend on like an actual DSLR. The best thing to do is learn the camera first. Uh, learn everything that it does. You might be surprised that that specific camera does one thing. Uh, and then you didn't know about it, and then you won't be missing out on some cool features that it might have. You can jump into the specifics of, you know, ISO, aperture, all that stuff, and shutter speed. Uh, but the one thing that makes the pictures and you as a photographer good is practice and learning different types of photography some types of photography might be different than others which they are i don't know why so they might they are uh like you might want to go practice some long exposure you know using really long shutter speeds or um messing with your apertures messing with your isos uh that's if you're shooting in manual um, if you're just starting out don't worry about all that you can learn specific types another time or just whenever you feel comfortable um, most of the time if you want to mess with one thing or the other then you'll need to know how to use all the settings together so that was my first one practice practice everything that you feel like you would need to think about what you want to do if you want to do weddings focus on wedding portraits you'll be working with people that's it um, you might be doing some candid shots um not so much posing and stuff that's what i do a lot i do a lot of modeling and a lot of weddings so that's what i kind of focused on so about equipment this is kind of like the second thing um this isn't really numbered i'm not going to number any of these these are just going to be like what i think you should do um if you don't know me i don't really have videos like this on my channel um I'm going to start. So, uh, this is just an overall, like what you would need to know on just getting into photography. I'm not talking about starting a photography business. I'm not talking about all that stuff. I can get into all that, but, uh, this is just for, if you're trying to pick up a camera, what do you need to do? If you feel like the more money you spend on a camera, <clears throat> the better you'll be. That's not true at all. You can go out, buy a $5,000 camera. Go for it. I don't care. Guess what? You're going to get the same results if you go out and buy a $200 used Canon or something. Um, because you don't know how to use it. And don't blow your money on the camera itself because it's a lot like buying a printer. Printers really aren't that expensive, right? But it was the ink that's expensive. Think of your camera as the printer, right? If you put it against lenses, it's not expensive because lenses add up like crazy. And that's next thing we're going to talk about. Lenses is your ink, basically. That's the quality. If you have low quality ink, you're not going to have good quality prints. If you have high quality ink, you're going to have good quality prints. And that has to do with the camera. All the camera's doing is taking the picture it has the megapixel count and megapixels does not mean better quality um that's all in the lens i don't know if you knew that but that's why you should stock up on lenses stocking up on lenses having different focal lengths different apertures uh is the biggest thing you'll ever come across that is the one thing you want to focus on what would you rather do Think of it like this, the whole printer and ink thing. Think of it as, do you need a whole bunch of printers? No, you need different. Think of it as like different kinds of ink doing different kinds of things. Like I know you use different kinds of paper to get different things like regular printer paper for regular prints. 
um, photo glossy paper, and then there's matte and stuff. They use the same ink, but think of it as like they use all different kinds of ink. So you want a bunch of different kinds of ink to have different kinds of prints. You'll have different kinds of focal lengths, different kinds of apertures to get different kinds of looks. And the quality of the glass, that's where all your quality comes from. Don't beat yourself up over lighting. Like I have some light panels up here. Don't go crazy. Don't even, if you're doing photography, don't get light panels. If you're doing video, get light panels, but don't have a constant light for your lighting. Get a flash. This is the flash that I use. It's called the Flashpoint um, Explore 600. The price is kind of in the name. Uh, it was about seven or eight hundred dollars. This is a high quality, like professional light. You don't even look at that. I don't even know why I showed you. Maybe at one point you can get into that, like off camera flash. But just starting out, um, depending on what camera you get, you might have a flash that pops up. Those look horrible. I will get I will get into the whole video about flash photography. Not off camera flash. That's something different. I'm talking putting the flash on top of your camera. Um, there's many different things you can do with it. Uh, you know, but you're going to need something that's, that can be moved around these. Well, mine doesn't have it. Cause I have a, I'm shooting this on a Canon six D Mark two. Um, but the higher up cameras, the higher end cameras don't have the pop-up flashes. You don't want to use those anyways. Even if it does have it, you don't, you don't want to do that. Those look horrible. Trust me. You don't want that. It might not, it might look good to you, but it, Realistically, it doesn't look good. At the least, have some kind of lighting, unless you're wanting to go for the natural light look. That's up to you. I'm a flash fanatic. Like, I love flashes so much. I only have one, <laughs> but I love flashes. All right, so now that you have your camera and your flash or whatever you're going to do, do not... <laughs> I see this all the time, especially around Christmas time when people get cameras. Don't even make one the year that you get your camera. Make it two, three, or four. Oh, maybe not four. It might not take you that long to get into it, but please do not go make a photography page on Facebook and start promoting at high prices before you even learn anything. I've seen so many people get completely screwed over that are are in it for the money and not doing it because you love it. You got to love to do photography to be in it. If you want go charge, you know, $1,200 for a wedding. If you don't give them $1,200 quality, if they don't have, you know, at least 300 pictures that are good enough to save edit and then send to them. Don't even bother, please, because you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt your business. You only need one person that knows a few people in your town, especially if you're going to be a local photographer, to ruin your reputation. Do not ruin your reputation. It's going to comp it's going to ruin you, and you're going to have to go somewhere else. Where there's more competition, you got to restart. Restarting in a new town is not easy. Rest starting in your own town is not easy to uh, so-called get jobs and learn <clears throat> go out in your free time do some street photography go to the park do some photography learn your camera first events do birthday parties for friends and family for free for the first year you're not making money you're learning don't think you're gonna put it in auto put a flash up or use the pop-up one and think you're just going to push one button and the camera's going to do the work for you. I mean, you can think that way and you can try it, but it's not going to work out for you. You're going to have a lot of bad shots. I, I would love to make a whole course on start to finish. You know, you're a beginner getting a camera. I'm going to teach you how to use manual off camera flash on camera flash, uh, studio lighting, everything like a whole rundown. Um, I think that would be cool. Really, the goal is to go from auto to manual, not jump, not jump from auto to manual. 
there's other things in between and i can get into that kind of stuff later on when you go out and start taking pictures and stuff one of the best things especially right now in 2023 which this has been accessible for a few years now and i will leave a link in the description for it but if you go to adobe creative cloud you can have access to photoshop and lightroom um, for $9.99 a month. Really, those are the best things for photographers. I can do a whole tutorial on how to use Photoshop and Lightroom and all that because I have, um, I went to online schools for both programs to learn it front and back, side to side, in and out. I know Lightroom and Photoshop and I would love to teach everyone how to use it. I wouldn't jump into Photoshop too quick as far as just editing pictures goes, Lightroom is going to be the thing that you use the most. Uh, so really the best thing to do when learning Photoshop or learning, uh, just don't even worry about Photoshop. Um, get Lightroom first. All you want to do is play around with all the settings, figure out what everything does, learn color correcting, stuff like that. What you don't want to do, and I did this for a long time before like really researching it and wondering how it works. I guess your camera will probably be set to JPEG by default. You want to change it to raw. And what you want to do is don't throw in a little 16, eight to 16 gig memory card. It gets you something like this. I don't know if you can see that this is 128. Actually it's a 32 gig, <laughs> uh, but get like a 64, 128 gig card. Um, usually the SanDisk extremes, the ultras and the extreme pros. Those are good because um, they have fast write speed. So they'll transfer over to your camera or from your camera to your, to your computer or whatever you're editing on <laughs> pretty quick. But also the speed of it, helps when taking pictures it helps with video a lot because if your write speed isn't quicker than your speed that your camera's trying to put the information on there it's going to cut your video short uh i'm not talking about video i can make a whole thing about video too this is, this is not about video um so if you have a slow enough card then you you know taking a bunch of pictures in a row like a, rap a rapid fire kind of thing it's gonna stop and it's going to think because your write speed isn't fast enough. Another th reason why I say this, to get as much memory cards and as big as they can go. Well, not as big as they can go. Pile up on the 64 gigs. They're like $15, $20. There's no reason. The 128 gigs are like $20, $25, $30. There's no reason to not have a pile of them. You never know when a card is going to corrupt. You never know when you're going to run out of sp space. But if you're shooting in raw, which that was my next point, shoot in raw. So when you go, they, they're bigger file sizes. And trust me, you're not going to run out of space if you have a 128 gig card. Some cameras only <clears throat> can use those memory cards. Don't go out buying a 500 gig or a terabyte little uh, sd card because um that's not it, your camera might not accept that kind of card also do not use the micro sd cards with the sd adapters just get an sd card you don't even have to take it out of your camera you can plug you get a cord for your camera to transfer your files from your camera to your computer so you never have to take it out and risk losing it if you have any friends that are photographers which everyone does because guess what how many times have i heard oh i have a friend that's gonna do my wedding you don't have to do it no more i i know what's gonna happen when they tell me that because 50 percent of the time they'll come back to me they said we should have did we should have picked you to do our wedding we will pay you to fix our pictures. I have fixed so many people's pictures for them. Well, I tried. Rookie mistakes. You know, they're shooting in JPEG. I can't do anything with the pictures if you're shooting in JPEG. Get with those friends that are photographers. You, you know, don't say like, hey, teach me everything you know. Like, that's not an effective way. 
just tell them, hey, let me come to your next shoot. Let me sit in. Just watch how they work or get them to explain to you what they're doing Um, because you don't get a better understanding or shoot alongside them, shadow them. Get someone to critique your work. Get your friend to critique your work. Um, Maybe have a friend that wants to learn more and wants to teach you a little bit or you can teach each other and you can be their second shooter they can be your second shooter you know uh network with other people because you never know when they're going to have to turn down a job because they have something already booked that day they'll hand it over to you if you're good friends with them i've gotten a lot of jobs from uh friends of mine that i've worked with just being a second shooter or like i'm doing pictures at a wedding they're doing video or something even the videographers get in with them when you go to places um just tell them hey like be straight up don't tell people you're professional if you're not i wouldn't even call yourself a professional for the first five years or so like you're still learning i'm still learning i still i learn stuff all the time and you're never gonna stop learning but you're you're gonna master something so figure out what you want to master and just roll with it you know like No one's stopping you. (laughs) So learn from other people. Having a a professional photographer critique your work is the best way to learn. Um, And just, you know, the last thing is just have fun. Photography is super fun. You know, like if you have a passion for it, you're going to, you're not even going to think of it as a job. You know, you're going to think of it as I'm having fun. And yeah, if you're passionate about it, then you're going to not even think about it and you're going to be learning all kinds of stuff. You won't have to feel like you have to do it or you have to try to learn anything. You're just going to want to learn. So that's it for me. Um, Hopefully this wasn't too long. Um, I did have a list of like 10 things I wanted to uh, talk about, but I kind of just rambled. This is unscripted. So (laughs) there you go. Hopefully you learned something. Um, get out there and just shoot. That's all you can do. You can watch hours and hours of YouTube videos, but this is more of like a hands-on thing. Like other photographers might not be using the same camera that you have. So, you know, some of the things they talk about or like showing their camera, what they're doing might not pertain to yours. So yeah, it's very specific, even if it's the same kind of camera. It might not be the same model, so things can be a lot different too. So if you have any questions, any suggestions, any anything for any future videos or, you know, something you want me to uh, do a whole tutorial about or something, just let me know in the comments and subscribe and like the video if you like videos like this. All right. See ya.